Hi everybody, this is Dr. Josh Burrells from Elite Chiropractic and Sport. I want to talk to you a little bit about your in-body measurement that you've done. Um, a couple things to remember, your in-body measurement is just one moment in time. Um, don't take any one test, uh, or don't put too much emphasis in any one test. It's something you want to look at trends. So you want to look at your measurement now, a month from now, two months from now, and you can look to see how any diet changes you're making or any exercise changes you're making, or both are working for you. So don't pay too much attention to any one test measurement. You're gonna look at a trend over time. There is a little bit of error in the test, but it's very close to a DEXA scan, which is the gold standard for uh, body composition. It's about 98% comparable to a DEXA scan, so it is pretty accurate. Uh, little things that could affect your test. You didn't drink enough water that day. You drank way too much coffee. You exercised already in the morning. All these things can change the measurement a little. So it's best to try to be consistent with every test you take. First thing in the morning, drink enough water, don't exercise yet, don't eat yet, take it, and that way you can try to keep your results as consistent as possible. So now we're gonna actually dive into what the in-body test shows you. All right, so this is uh, my results of my in-body, and so we're gonna go over each of the important sections now um, so we can uh, help you identify what's going on in your test. Okay, this section is the muscle fat analysis and it's giving you three different measurements. It's giving you your weight, which you should have seen at the start of the test. It's giving, to, it's giving you your skeletal muscle mass, which is the actual amount of muscle you have on your body. And it's giving you the body fat mass, which is the amount of body fat you have on your body. If you notice at the top, you have a uh, downward arrow, you have a dash sign, and then you have an upward hour, arrow. So you can see where your measurements rate against uh, men and women your age. So if you're in the up arrow, you're above average. If you're in the down low, you're below average. And if you're in the dash, you are around the average category. So these are numbers to look at as you continue taking your tests. The next section we're looking at is the obesity analysis. You have two numbers, your BMI or your body mass index and your percent body fat. Don't worry about your body mass index. That number is kind of outdated. Um, the more muscle you have, the more inaccurate that number is. The more important number to look at is your percent body fat. And again, you'll see that number and you'll see if you're in the arrow pointing down, the dash or the above arrow showing you where you relate in terms of men and women your, um, your age. So this is a number definitely to pay attention to. We're gonna talk about your visceral fat in a little bit and this number is related to your visceral fat. The next section to take a look at is your segmental lean analysis. You'll see right arm, left arm, trunk, right leg, left leg. And so we're actually taking a look at your muscle in each of those extremities and your trunk. The biggest point to take away from this is to see how much of an asymmetry you have between each arm and each leg. If the numbers are greater than 0.4, then you have a significant difference. If there is a significant diff difference, it could be related to a nerve issue, you're overtraining on one side versus the other, um, but generally that's something that you can rectify um, with a little bit of extra time and um, uh, commitment to it in the gym or whatever activities that you like to do. Uh, again, you're looking at the arrow pointed down, the dash and the up arrow, so you can see where your muscle content relates to people your age. This next number is your visceral fat level. Visceral fat is the fat around your abdominal organs. This is probably the worst type of fat you can have. This fat will produce inflammatory markers. The lower this number is, generally the healthier you are, the higher this number is, the less healthy you are. As your body fat percentage goes down, this number will go down too. So I referenced that in the earlier picture. So as you do dietary changes and exercise changes and you lose your body fat, this visceral fat number will go down too, making you healthier overall. If there's one number on this test to specifically pay attention to, it's the visceral fat. The next category is the body composition category. You see here your weight, your skeletal muscle mass, your percent body fat, and the ECW over TBW is extracellular water over total body water. Um, that's a number that we don't necessarily need to worry about right now. Um, but the important thing about this body comp history is that the more tests you take um, in the in body, you can track your progress. And so you can see, in this case, the arrow is going down and up in certain situations. And it's an easy way to get an overview of how you're doing in regards to your body composition. 